Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. A biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Also, subscribe, like, and share. This family tree represents two members of the research group Universal Center for Renovation. Our Family Tree Paternal Grandfather and paternal grandmother, father's parents. Black Cherokee Indian, paternal line. Maternal line includes Thomas Jefferson and Robert Fulton. This is part two. The Jewish Encyclopedia Boule Council Court of Justice, or Sanhedrin, the seat of the Senate, Josephus, hence also Senator, the Boulets, or Senates of Judea. There were 24 Boulets in the south of Judea. Boule, Senators of Judea the Jews. Sigma Pi Phi Sigma Pi Phi, also known as the Boule, is the oldest fraternity for African Americans. Founded in 1904, Sigma Pi Phi was founded in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Sigma Pi Phi has over 5,000 members and 139 chapters throughout the United States, England, and the Bahamas. African American Sigma Pi Phi Boule Senators of the Jews. Official Gazette of the United States Patent and Trademark Office, page 621. Collective membership marks Class 200, Collective Membership, Grand Boule of the Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity, New York, New York. The mark consists of a stylized sphinx with the head of a woman, the wings of a bird, and the body of a lion with its paw. On an urn, the Sphinx 
is hunched on a platform upon which the Greek letters Sigma, Pi, and Phi are inscribed for indicating membership in a fraternal organization united to promote congeniality, tolerance, and constructive effort, leadership, education, and empowerment. First use 515-1904 and commerce 515-1904. The female sphinx of Greek tradition has its origin in a fairy tale motif. This sphinx was often winged, always female, a demon lurking at the side of the road, challenging travelers to solve her riddle and devouring all those who could not, until Oedipus succeeded in matching wits with her. She thus came to symbolize the riddle of human existence. The existential question that humanity is challenged to answer. It was this Sphinx with her mysterious smile that was a favorite subject of Mannerist and Baroque painters and sculptors. Dictionary of Symbolism, Culture Icons, page 316. Black Cherokee Indian, free people of color, Atsai Nahasai, Black Cherokee Freemen. From the website Cherokee by Blood, it is known that many Africans intermarried with Native Americans. Less widely known is the fact that many Native Americans also owned African slaves and fathered children with African slave women. In addition, there were smaller numbers, free people of color, who lived in many of the nations and who also lived and married persons from the same nations and whose descendants claim ancestry from the Oklahoma Black Indian people. As a result, thousands of Americans have African and Indian ancestry. The five civilized tribes, Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole, owned Slaves. The Origins Cherokee Indians used to enslave prisoners of war. The white traders incited into tribal warfare for their own profit. In the beginning, Cherokees regarded prisoners of war as commodities to be traded for other goods. The rapid development of dependence on foreign manufactured goods made slaves very desirable possessions. As a result, warfare escalated and enslavement came to be viewed in an entirely different way when they fully adopted the cultural white practices and started owning farms. Slaves became free labor. As warfare wasn't being practiced anymore, and there was no Indian slaves available, the Cherokee 
begin to employ African slaves at sea and Hasai in their fields. Black Cherokee freed men at Tatsai and Hasai. Slavery and the evolution of Cherokee society, 1540 to 1866. Chapter 1 Aboriginal Cherokee Bondage. Hernando de Soto, Lady Confita. 1540, South Carolina. Early Europeans who came into contact with the Cherokees described an indigenous institution they called slavery. In 1540, for example, the chroniclers of Hernando de Soto's expedition reported the presence of masters and slaves among the natives they encountered on their trek across what is now the southeastern United States. Their narratives included a particular detailed account of the Lady of Kana, Vita Chiqua, apparently a slaveholder of great wealth and power, whom the evading Spaniards captured along with several of her female attendants. These prisoners finally managed to escape, but other Indians did not have such good fortune. De Soto depended on natives to serve as burdeners in transporting his expedition's supplies. He usually seized the laborers he needed by force, placing them in chains with iron collars around their necks. Occasionally, however, chiefs gave the conquistadors their slaves for use by the Spanards as burdeners. Although the Soto technique in dealing with the Indians of the Southeast suggests that these gifts may have been acquired through the rest. This experience indicates that some chiefs did have in their possession individual whom they could hand over to the Spaniards. Early European observers of the Cherokees, such as the Soto's chroniclers, assumed that these unfree people occupied a subservient social position and performed a distinct and essential economic function in Aboriginal Cherokee society. Europeans were well acquainted with the enslavement of both red and black men to satisfy the persistent demand for labor in their own merchantilist economies. And blinded by their own ethnocentrism, they expected to find an identical economy, demand and observers managed to overcome their preconceived notions about Aboriginal Cherokee society, they would have discovered an egalitarian social system, a sexual division of labor, and a substance economy which defied any explanation for bondsmen comprehensible to them. In fact, Cherokee bondsmen bear so little resemblance to European slaves 
that the term slave can perhaps only be used inaccurately. The Cherokees called these unfree people Atatsai Nahatsai, or one who is owned, and the role they played in Aboriginal society can only be discovered within the context of the substance economy, the social and political organization, and the values and beliefs which were so alien to early Europeans. Black Cherokee Freedmen, Atasai Nahasai, Bible Hub, Strong Accordance, Hebrew, Nasa, Nasa, to lift, carry, take, original word, Nasa, definition, to lift, carry, take. Black Cherokee freed men, Atasai Nashai, Nasha, Hebrew, assisted, bear, bearer, bearers, bearing, beers, born, carried, carries, carry, carry away, carry, carrying, fetch, lift, lifted, lifts, load, loaded, support, supported, transporters, worked, Nahatsai, Nasha, Hebrew. Black Cherokees, free people of color. Free people of color who lived in many of the nations and who also lived and married persons from the same nations and who descendants claim ancestry from the Oklahoma Black Indian people. Black Cherokees, free people of color, Hernando de Soto, Lady Confetta Chiqua, April 1540, South Carolina. Confetta Chiqua. Cafita Chiqua was a paramount chiefdom founded about 1300 AD and encountered by the Hernando de Soto expedition in South Carolina in April 1540. A map showing the de Soto expedition route through Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Alabama, based on the Charles M. Hudson map of 1997. De Soto and the Lady of Covita Chiqua. While De Soto was among the Apalachee Indians in Florida, a captured boy called Perico told him of a province named Yupaha, ruled by a woman and rich in gold. De Soto decided to strike out for Yupaha, which turned out to be an alternative name for Kofita Chiqua. In the spring of 1540, De Soto and his army traveled north through central Georgia to the Okni River town of Kofakwe in present-day Greene County, Georgia, and the chiefdom of Akwait, the people of Kalfakwai, were aware of Kofita Chiqua, but did not know its exact location. De Soto impressed 700 Indians from Kalfakwai and struck off eastward into a large uninhabited wilderness, separating the chiefdoms of Akwait in Kofita Chiqua. He reached Kofita Chiqua only after two weeks of hard travel and near starvation. 
De Soto was met by a woman the chroniclers called the Lady of Cofita Chiqua, who was carried from the town to the river's edge on a litter that was covered with a delicate white cloth. They considered her the chitiness of the villages. After spending several weeks in the village, the Spaniards took the lady as a captive and hostage and headed to the next chiefdom, to the northwest, Jora. She eventually escaped. The Spanish found no gold in Cofita Chiqua, nor anywhere in its vicinity. The De Soto Chronicles, written in 1993 and published by the University of Alabama, is a compilation of eyewitnesses' accounts from the De Soto expedition. It is interesting that the book gives a detailed discussion of a desertion that occurred near the present-day town of Saluda, North Carolina. The Saluda Town website describes its location as where the foothills end and the Blue Ridge begins. The De Soto Chronicles recounts that the expedition force held hostage a female leader from the town of Cofita Chiqua in present-day southeastern South Carolina. She escaped captivity with one of the African servants after pretending to need to relieve herself and failing to return. Lady Kofita Chiqua, she escaped captivity with one of the African servants. Source, Strange Tales from Virginia's Mountains. Black Cherokee Timeline. Source, Oklahoma Black Cherokee, 1540. One of Hernando's de Soto slaves helps a captive Indian chiefess escape. They marry. Slave helps Lady Cole Vita Chiqua escape. They marry. African Creeks Estovesti and the Creek Nation Page 3 The first recorded contact between Africans and the Southeastern Indians began when several black members of Hernando's de Soto's expedition deserted and found refuge in the various Indian chiefdoms they encountered during their entrada through the southeast in 1540. The African Americans Many Rivers to Cross The first large group of slaves to arrive in lands that would become the United States. These black slaves may have been Atlantic Creoles or Ladinos, people of African descent from other Spanish or Portuguese colonies who had become Catholic, either from birth or descent. Atlantic Creoles, Ladinos, Gone. 
the first two centuries of slavery in North America. Atlantic Creoles first emerged around the trading factories or fiterias that European expansionists established along the coast of Africa in the 15th century. These official representatives were succeeded in turn by private entrepreneurs or lasados, Atlantic Creoles, lasados. Elmina sprouted a substantial cadre of Euro Africans, most of them Russo Africans, that is, of Portuguese and African descent, men and women of African birth, but shared African and European parentage, whose suave skin, European dress, and deportment, acquaintance with local norms and multilingualism gave them an insider's knowledge of both African and European ways, but denied them full acceptance in either culture. Russo Although the Tango Miles faced reproach and proscription, all parties conceded that the Creoles were shrewd traders with a mastery of the fine points of intercultural negotiations and found advantage in dealing with them. Tango Miles Creoles Of necessity, they spoke a variety of African and European languages, weighed strongly towards Portuguese. But from this seeming babble emerged a pidgin form of speech that borrowed its vocabulary from all parties and created a grammar unique unto itself, diversively called Fala de Guinea or Fala de Negros, literally Guinea speech or Negro speech by the Portuguese and Black Portuguese by others. This Creole language became the lingua franca of the Atlantic, Guinea speech, Negro speech, Black Portuguese, a form of Judeo Portuguese. Juan de Perea, born 1606 in Antequia, Spain, was a Spanish painter. De Perea was a Atlantic Creole who never came over to the Americas but remained in Europe his entire life. The King's Fountain, Lisbon, Portugal, 1570. Many Creoles who 
were free people of color and lived in the trading post cities of West Africa, Lisbon, Portugal, and in Seville, Spain, were the first ones to become slaves in the New World. Lasados. The Lasados, literally the thrown out ones or the cast out ones, were settlers and adventurers of Portuguese origin in Senegibia, Cabo Verde, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and other areas on the coast of West Africa. Many were Jews, often new Christians, escaping persecution from the Portuguese Inquisition. They established clandestine trading networks in weaponry and spices. The Lasados originated the Portuguese-based Creole languages. Lasados or Jews originated Creole languages and culture in West Africa before arriving in the Americas. The coastal Lasados constituted a new socio-cultural group that spoke Portuguese, dressed in European clothes, and lived in rectangular Portuguese style houses with whitewashed walls and verandas, but which also adopted local African customs such as tattooing and scarification. Their religious beliefs were likewise a mix of Catholicism, West African Wudan, and ancestor worship. The strong linguistic and familiar ties between the Lanzados, their descendants, and native people resulted in a distinct Luso African culture that partially persists into the 21st century. Their customs were syncretic, combining different beliefs and various schools of thought. They were ethnic Jews, but mixing Catholicism, West African Vudan, and ancestor worship into their cultural outlook. The Luso Africans' culture and people, the free people of color, and enslaved of the transatlantic slave trade. Shield or Star of David Some of the free people of color were able to retain some of their Hebrew heritage. The Boule were picked from these families with pedigree. Spanish Portuguese aristocracy of the Jews of color. There was a time when a small number of socially and powerful and politically privileged Jews and Afro-Americans embraced an ideology of extreme cultural assimilationism. The adult this ideology was emphatically not without paradox and illogic. Its ultimate consequence entailed the abandonment of identity and that these two elites, one wealthy and of primarily German Jewish descent, the other largely northern college trained Afro-Americans reacting to threats to their hegemony both from within and from outside their ethnic universes 
decided to concert many of their undertakings in the belief that group assimilation could be accelerated through strategies of overt and covert mutual assistance. Influential Jews and talented Afro-Americans feared that within a short span of time, they would be powerless to promote their social and political programs because of recrudescent nativism and racism set off among old stock Americans by uncontrolled migrations from Eastern Europe and the Deep South, triggering in turn divisive and strident cultural and political nationalism among the unabsorbed, increasingly despised newcomers. Wealthy German Jews made an alliance with the descendants of African American children of the Lazados, who were Portuguese Spanish Jews. Spanish Jews were considered the aristocracy of the Jews. Since 1903, Sigma Pi Phi, known as the Boule, has been the most selective membership club for men in the black elite, consisting mostly of doctors, lawyers, and wealthy businessmen. Each chapter regularly hosts black tie dinners and gatherings. I Top row center holds with my boule chapter members at a recent holiday party. I equals the author Lawrence Otis Graham, author of the book Our Kind of People. African American Upper Class. The African-American upper class is a social class that consists of African-American individuals who have high disposable income and high net worth. The group may include highly paid white collar professionals such as engineers, lawyers, accountants, doctors, politicians, business executives, venture capitalists. CEOs, celebrities, entertainers, entrepreneurs, and peers. This social class, sometimes referred to as the black upper class, the black upper middle class, or black elite, represents 1% of the total black population in the United States. 1% of Black American population. 